This is Twit. Did y'all read uh, Marco Arment's um, piece in on, oh, yes. on Marco.org? Mm -hmm. Marco is, of course, the creator of Instapaper. He was the first programmer at Tumblr. Made some money when Tumblr got sold to Yahoo. And has been just kind of, I think, become thinking. kind of... He's been thinking. He's become kind of the grand philosopher of the Mac world. He's also a, still a developer. In fact, his Overcast mm -hmm. podcast program is quite good. Quite, as you would expect from Marco, quite beautiful. But he wrote a piece on his uh, website. He's actually since said, I kind of regret it. <laughs> 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 Apple has lost the functional high ground. I suppose before I read this piece from January 4th, I should read the piece he wrote the next day. What it's like to be way too popular for a day. He says people misquoted him. His words were everywhere, chopped up and twisted by sensational opportunists to fuel the yep. tired Apple is doomed narrative with my name on it. Marco, welcome to the club. <laughs> I wrote a little piece about Android last year. That uh, you, We've all been there. Uh, but yep. Marco, I'll tell you why it's important. And the same thing with you, Andy. Um, Marco is so firmly you know, associated with the Apple name. In uh, in summary, what he wrote was, I think, not completely wrong, which is that Apple has become more of a marketing-driven company, and because of that, software quality has suffered. He says hardware is just as good as ever, but the software quality has suffered particularly because he believes marketing has demanded every year a new OS X, every year a new OS iOS, and, and they just, uh, having a major new release every year, he writes, is clearly impossible for the engineering teams to keep up with while maintaining quality they're doing too much with unrealistic deadlines and he blames marketing i fear that apple's leadership doesn't realize quite how badly and deeply their software flaws have damaged their reputation because if they realized it they'd make serious changes that don't appear to be happening instead the opposite appears to be happening the pace of rapid updates on multiple product lines seems to be expanding and accelerating comments I don't necessarily completely disagree. I feel mm -hmm. like the last truly stable uh, version of OS X was 10.8.6. <laughs> I think that it's it's been uh, Mavericks had, was, I think, almost unusable, uh, in my opinion, from a production perspective. And, and Yosemite is better. Um, but we just saw so many problems and we continue to see problems with it. Uh, and I just feel like there's just an enormous number of uh, features being added, which is fine. But I would love to see Apple not release a new operating system for I mean, other than just incremental upgrades to fix everything for a couple of years. I think that would a couple of years would be great uh, to kind of solve a lot of these issues uh, rather than, I don't need any new features on my in OS 10. <laughs> I think yeah. that's the problem. I think that I don't really, I mean, all the stuff they're adding is great. I'm, I'm really glad that they're doing that, but I don't, I, what I really need is for my computer to, you know, work every time I open it. It's interesting. Um, there's been a number of comments uh, on this article. Here's one from a former Apple engineer. Um, Apple changed its software design technology. So with Bertrand, they would move in giant monolithic releases. Sometimes, uh, what is the name for this? Um, it's like building a house. You put all these pieces in, and you hope at the end you get a stable house. Mm -hmm. He said every group would just dump in whatever they had ready, and the whole thing would get released with nightly builds. He says, with Snow Leopard in particular, I remember three dozen releases in a row where Xcode was unusable due to Objective-C garbage collection issues. Random stuff you didn't expect, like core graphics, would have showstopper issues, and then we'd report it, and it would get fixed by next week. But this resulted in extremely late releases that had a ton of bugs that we piled patches onto as time went on. Uh, under Federighi, and this was part of the reorganization Tim Cook did last year, uh, Federighi moved the organization into a sprint system. And this is very, this in most modern software development, I think, is now, instead of, they call this old style, the waterfall system, where everything cascades until you have a final product. The sprint system, you'd, you'd work on new features for two weeks, spend a week fixing bugs, and you do this inside, you repeat, repeat, repeat. He said, after 10 or 10, 12 or 16 of these cycles, we deem it ready and ship it out. Um, but he does say the time frame is a lot shorter than it used to be. He says, Tiger and Leopard had a good two years to mature and get patches. While their delayed successors missed target dates, they felt stable because they were just old. Sort of like Debian stable. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to channel uh, Rene Ritchie here who would say right now at this point, well, yeah, but let's not forget System 7. 
System 9. I mean, they're... It's, yeah, Apple's always had. I mean, bug, software is buggy. Microsoft's having the same problems right now with Windows 8. Yeah, and there have been a lot of showstoppers. Remember the bug? I forget what was it, eight or nine? No, nine point one or something. Where under the right circumstances, you could lose your entire hard drive, and that was on like a, a shipping consumer release version of the OS. I mean, <clears throat> Apple has always had certain, uh, has always had a wax and wane periods. Uh, I think that. The most significant change that I can see is that people are starting to appreciate that Apple is just a tech company, that they are not, you know, Zeus did not storm the ground and then fully formed out of his forehead, plopped a, the, the Apple Cupertino campus and everything that they do is uh, is, is holy and, and correct, um, that they they are a company with a lot of moving parts that they can sometimes those parts mesh very very nicely and they the machine works perfectly sometimes they don't mesh well and sometimes things get out uh, get out of the campus that aren't really uh, fully formed just like pretty much every other tech company um if there's a difference over the past 5 years it's that there are now so many pieces to the company now that uh, maybe five years ago, and maybe this was incorrect for me to to say, but I used to recommend my, my default recommendation when people would ask me what should I, what kind of computer should I buy, what, what kind of phone should I buy. My default recommendation would be a Mac because I thought that universally this is unless you have a good reason to get a Windows machine, uh, then you're probably going to have a better time with a Mac because it's easier to use, it's more reliable. In that time, however. Uh, competitors have cre have created uh, hardware and software that isn't quite as good, but it's good enough that it can be uh, the decision can be influenced by other factors. And now there are enough problems that tend to pop up with the uh, uh, iOS and macOS releases that it's not unreliable, but it's not going to be the same. I bet this person's going to have a really good experience if they upgrade right now. Certainly, I've stopped recommending my 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 goalpost for how long should you wait after a major OS release until you actually install it. It's gone from a couple of weeks to now a couple of months, and to write even even today. Uh, I, I only recently updated my most important Mac to Yosemite, and I still have a couple of Macs in the house that I haven't upgraded yet because I don't think the Yosemite features are so important that I need to have it on every single Mac. And I like the, the stability of my old computers uh, on 10.8 uh, and 10.9.